Oasis Audio presents Remnants, Season of Fire by Lisa T. Berggren Read for you by Georgina Marie If you will not fight for right when you can easily win without bloodshed, if you will not fight when your victory is sure and not too costly, you may come to the moment when you will have to fight with all the odds against you and only a precarious chance of survival. There may even be a worse case. You may have to fight when there is no hope of victory, because it is better to perish than to live as slaves. Sir Winston Churchill, 1874 to 1965 Chapter 1 Andriana I found the ship we want, a merchant vessel with supplies for Catal, the far north. Chaza El cast a worried glance back through the maze of crates, three times taller than we were, and then to us again. One little problem. She's loaded with soldiers. Perfect, Vidar said, crossing his arms. It's been a little dull around here. I smiled at him my eyes tracing the lingering bruises on his olive skin, then sighed heavily, wishing again Nero was with us. He'd know how to go about this, seeking to free Capriol from the island prison, as well as how to board a ship loaded with sailors who wouldn't exactly welcome us. You're sure that's the one, Chaz? Vidar asked, gesturing toward the ship. The one you saw in your vision? The shorter man nodded once, and his dark silken hair washed forward and back. And as far as I can tell, it's the only one heading out anytime soon. We're too obvious altogether, Killian groused, pushing his blonde dreadlocks over his shoulder. He looked at Ronan, my knight, who had assumed leadership in Nero's absence. Send me, and Bologna. We'll slip in, spring Capriel and bring him back to you. The rest of you can find shelter in the meantime. Ronan's green-brown eyes hovered over Killian a minute, then at the rest of us. Look, I know this seems like the most idiotic thing we've done, but Capriel is the key to us winning this war. Nero said so. He's the only one who can really go head-to-head -head with Keylock. And if he's ill... He looked at each of us in turn again, and we seemed to collectively hold our breath. We all need to go, Ronan said, because we all might not return. His lips clamped together and avoided my gaze. We're never going to be closer to Capriel than this, right? Anyone disagree that this is where the Maker has led us? We all shook our heads, even Killian, clearly miserable at the idea of putting his remnant in such danger but ever since we'd seen the broad band of the blue ocean, we'd felt the undeniable pull toward Catal and Capriel, as impossible as it seemed. Get down, Bologna suddenly growled. Her long brown braid hit my shoulder as she whirled to crouch beside me. We ducked, and a second later heard two men walk by, just one crate away from us. They were laughing under their breath and murmuring to each other. We'd seen the whistles every worker wore around their necks. The dockyard's air filled with the sound of them, long and short blasts, a wordless language that sounded eerie and foreign to our ears. I had no doubt that there was a unique blast for alarm, a call that would send some of the gray-clad soldiers stationed on each corner, armed with automatic weapons, after us. The men paused on the far side of the crate that separated Chazael, Killian, and Tressa from them. My fellow Aleth were breathing shallowly, eyes wide, backs to the crate. We all had our hands on the hilts of our weapons, but my ears strained for the bits of conversation from the dock workers. They were speaking in low tones about the far north, the merchant ship Chazael said we had to board if we were to get to Catal today. 
Only the transports and supply vessels were allowed around the island. Any others were immediately destroyed. I could feel Ronan stare. Ever since we'd kissed, he seemed somehow more... present. Vivid. Like he was an extension of me, in a way. I met his gaze and his brows knit together. He vacillated between concern and understanding what I was after. To learn more from the two dock workers nearest us. If either felt alarm, I'd be the first to know it. An empath, Nero had called me once. It was my gift to feel what others felt. Just as it was Tressa's gift to heal, Chazael's gift to see the future, and Vidar's gift to know light or darkness in another. We knew that somewhere ahead of us was Capriel, with a miraculous power of his own, and others too, if they yet lived. I knew it as surely as Ronan did that this, this mad need to get to Capriel, our brother, our prince, and free him, was what we had to get done. Somehow. Shoving off soon, said one of the dock workers as I dared to edge closer, crawling down low in order to hear better. Yeah, all the freight's loaded already, said the other. Their conversation over, they turned to go, and I slowly pulled back, freezing as they came into view, with me in plain sight. But they passed on. My heart hammered in my chest, but I grinned, I rolled to my side and around the corner of the crate. Ronan gripped my upper arms half in consternation at the risk I took, half in hope I'd gained good information. We have to get aboard tonight. They're to leave soon, I whispered. Bologna in Vidar, he said. Make your way over to the far north and see if you can spot a way for us to steal our way aboard. The two nodded and immediately moved out each carrying a dagger in their hands. If they came up against a dock worker, they'd be best dispatched in silence. Ronan and Killian watched their progress, ready to spring to their aid if necessary. The rest of us stayed down. What if we got into some crates? Tressa asked, pushing her red ponytail over her shoulder. Like we did in Castle Vega. It sounds like they're all loaded already, I said. She sighed. I knew what she was after, avoiding a fight. And I couldn't blame her. She found it nearly impossible to hurt another. With her gift of healing, it felt completely wrong, regardless of how much danger she faced. I had encountered something similar. As my empathy gifting grew, I knew what it was to feel what my enemies felt, and their fear or fury tangled with my own heart in alarming fashion. The mere thought of it sent bands of panic around my chest, and I fought to breathe. But I couldn't help it. Were Tressa and I as much an impediment as a boon to the Aelith? Might we not endanger the others in their efforts to protect us as well as themselves? Chazael caught my eye. He studied me, searching me, seeing me in a way that I hadn't often been seen. It reminded me of Nero, and my heart panged anew with worry for our lost leader. Was he all right? Hurt? Even alive? We are on the Maker's path, Chazael said, a hint of compassion in the lines of his moon-shaped eyes, as well as within him. And this is his next step for you, Andriana. I've seen it. I nodded once, not really feeling like I wanted to get into it. But his choice of words, you, not us, and then the cold wave of hesitation from him gave me pause. What else had he seen in his vision? We'd already lost Nero. Were we about to lose others on this mission, too? Chazael moved away, edging past Ronan as if he didn't want to stay close to me, giving me further opportunity to question him. 
Ronan absently ran his fingers along his ribs, where I'd seen the massive bruise days ago. Even as he watched our companions make their way through the labyrinth of the dock's crates. Hey, I said, touching his hand lightly. How are you healing? It's getting better, he said distractedly, but he dropped his hand. Can you still see Bologna and Vid? No. They disappeared a couple rows away from the ship. I listened to the whistles that continued to fill the air and prayed we wouldn't hear an alarm. <laughs>